let's start for today for our session. Thank you all for joining today. Um, it's not only me um, for refactoring mobile app security. That's our talk for today. Um, I will. Hmm? Where's my mouse? Okay. I will also be joined by Carlos, who is in a Zoom session um, at the moment. So he will be taking care of the second part today. I will be doing the first part. Um, Carlos, he's a mobile security engineer at um, NowSecure. And uh, myself, my name is Sven, and I'm working at a company called Crayon. But why we are here today is that we are both the project leads for the mobile application security project. Um, so I'm assuming that you all know already um, a little bit about a project, meaning our two main deliverables, our two main deliverables, which is the MASVS and the, also the MASTG. So the MASVS um, for both of these projects or these two deliverables, we started actually in 2016, 2017, and the documents were actually pretty, um, we were just evolving them, but not really dramatically changing them. And as you can see, um, in January 2022, we had still new versions, but we also realized that we need to do some changes. So the MASVS, the controls that, um, the document about the controls that we have, we realized that some of these controls that were maybe a bit too complex, not really property, properly articulated, and um, we just wanted to really focus on the mobile apps, meaning on the client side, because some of the controls in there were also focusing on the server side, and this was a bit of um, overlapping with other projects like the ASVS from OVASP, and we just wanted to refactor this. So this became then um, version 2.0. This refactoring process took quite some time, um, as it's of course mainly driven by, by volunteers like Carlos and myself. And just last year, around April, we could um, release the OVASP MESVS version 2.0. And this is really the, uh, the guardrails that we have now for the next refactoring, which is the testing guide. So the testing guide, which we also will be mainly focusing on today, is really a quite big book. If you would print it, it looks like this. So if you remember still old phone books, this is basically the size of it. So this is more or less the condensed versions of a lot of people in the last six, seven years that like Carlos and myself, I mean, there were hundreds of people that were sharing their knowledge as part of this open source project, and it's really condensed into this book where um, you can see a lot of different kind of reverse engineering techniques, how to use Frida, how to um, analyze local storage, all of these things, they're basically described in this book. And this is also the focus for, for our talk today. Um, so we had another release and we harmonized the project. Also, you can see in terms of the covers, which look quite nice now. And um, there's a new release even today. So version 1.7.0 was just released by Carlos just a few hours back. And this is our very first step as part of, as an intermediate step, you could say, for our next version that hopefully can also be released um, soon, maybe in 2024. So there's a question mark for this, but Carlos will share a few more details around this um, also later. So I will give you a quick update of what has happened in the last few months. Um, the very first thing is around um, testing profiles. So for those of you that are familiar with the project, we had different kind of levels. So level one, level two, and R. Level one is something that we consider as something that is really essential for every mobile app, regardless what the mobile app is doing. This is something every app should have, like for example, using HTTPS, so really no-brainer controls, of course. Um, then we have level two, which is more advanced security. This might be more for things like um, banking apps, maybe games, just something that need more advanced security. And then we have R, meaning resiliency. So these are not vulnerabilities. So let me please emphasize on this because there's sometimes a bit of a confusion around it. So missing, uh, so things like jailbreak detection, anti-debugging, all of these things that can be part of a mobile app is really just there to slow down reverse engineers, to make your app more resilient against reverse engineers. Not having it is not a vulnerability because you always will be able to bypass them eventually. And so in the past we had these three levels. So nowadays we consider this as so-called testing profiles because ideally you should anyway always do a threat model and out of the threat model, you simply get the controls that really make sense for you. If for whatever reason a threat model cannot be done, 
then these kind of profiles should definitely be able to help you because this will guide you a little bit what are the basics, what are more the advanced features, and maybe even things in terms of resiliency that you want to look into. And uh, we recently focused on a potential new um, profile, which is P for privacy. So we also um, have a proposal for this on the right side. So on the right side, this is for the testing um, profiles. This is already closed for comments, but definitely worth a read if you want to know uh, more details around this. Then there's privacy. So for privacy, we also have um, a document. It's still open for comments till, till next month, where we just summarized everything um, that we consider makes sense as a new requirement and therefore even a new domain in the MASVS. Because since last year, we can see, of course, a big push um, in terms of the Google Play Store and also the iOS App Store, where there are now so-called nutrition labels in the iOS App Store and also um, data privacy labels from the Google Play Store, where developers are encouraged to list down what kind of data is actually being processed by the app, and therefore it's listed already when you download and, and use the app. So as part of this, privacy is definitely becoming more present, and we simply want to reflect this also in the standard. So we have now a quite detailed document that you can see here on the right side if you want to make a deep dive into, is, into this and also our thought process behind it. So please, if you have any comments or want to um, explore this, we are very happy for any kind of comments that you might have. Okay. So as part of this new profile at the moment, we came up with four different kind of um, test cases or different kind of controls, not test cases. So there's um, privacy one, the app minimizes access to sensitive data and also um, resources. So this means what kind of permission, for example, is an app actually using? The more permission it has, the more invasive it might be, of course, to your privacy, if it has access to your microphone or other things then this is of course a big, um, could eventually become a big problem if it's not readed by the functionality of the app. But it's also about SDKs, meaning what is the app actually using in terms of different kind of third party libraries. There we might even need an SBOM, meaning a software bill of material to understand what is used in this application, what kind of permissions is it actually using. All of these things basically boil down into this first um, privacy control. The second one is more about um, that the app prevents the identification of the user. Obviously, there are a lot of mechanisms in order to anonymize users or to make a pseudonym for a user so that we do not really handle the actual um, um, identifier of, an, of a person. For privacy three is the app is transparent about data collection and also usage. So this brings us back again to what um, the App Store and also the Play Store is pushing for already that every app is listing down what kind of data it's collecting from you, it's processing, maybe sharing with others. This is really to have these kind of consistency and that we have a way to um, verify this also. And last but not least is that the app offers user control over their data. All the data that is being shared with a specific company, there should of course be a way that I can simply delete it. The next thing that um, we were also working on and that was also released. And there's still, it's still open for comments today. So if you want to have a read about this, there's still an opportunity and um, give your feedback. This is about a mobile application security risk scoring. So this was quite a great effort from the industry, academia, and also with us in order to come up with a proper way of um, calculating risk for mobile apps. So it basically boils down to two things, impact and likelihood. So for the impact, we basically boil it down to the permissions that an app has. The more permissions an app has, in case it gets exploited, the more um, the impact might be, of course, on the device and maybe also to other apps. The likelihood boils down to um, the requirements that the app um, is uh, if, if, if the app is verified against, for example, 10 different kind of controls in the MASVS, then we can just check if it fails, for example, five of these 10, and the more it fails, the higher the risk score will be. So therefore, it's a mixture of the impact in terms of the permissions and the likelihood, meaning how compliant is this app actually against the MASVS controls, and the result will be a risk score. So all of this 
is um, described in great detail in this document here on the right side, even with a few examples, how this can also be applied. And yes, I was mentioning it already earlier, the MASTG is out today, version 1.7.0, with quite a few nice changes, and um, Carlos will guide you now through um, those changes and a few other things. So over to you, Carlos. Thanks. Hello, everyone. So uh, let's take a look at those changes. You have seen a couple of colors over there, orange, pink, blue, and so on. Uh, everything has a meaning. So in the new refactoring, we started uh, some time ago just by tweaking our version one tests a little bit. Um, right now, you can see here as, as to do because this refers to the version two tests. Um, in this new uh, iteration of the refactoring, we've touched the techniques, uh, tools, and reference apps. So as Sven showed before, the um, MASTG started being a book. It's a huge book with long, very long chapters. Uh, so it's not really easy to parse if you want to parse it. So. We wanted to get this uh, to a better place and we started refactoring, like really treating this as a, let's say, software architecture and um, building different components. What we started calling the techniques, the tools, the reference apps, the knowledge or theory as well. And on the other side, we have the MESVS controls. So this is uh, available in our website today, just on the next slide. So when you go to the MSTG, you will see a couple of buttons over there for our tests, techniques, tools, apps, as well as on the sidebar, which is all, all, always present. So you can also navigate um, the MSTG this way. You can, of course, always do searches, but if you go to techniques or you search for one of our favorite tools, Frida. In the next slide, you can see that now it has its own page with its own metadata. This is behind the scenes, but um, the things that you see at the top, actually that's metadata that it's in each of these sites. We're going to see more about this metadata later. Uh, I have a couple of examples for you. And on the next slide, we can see that um, some time ago, we presented the first proposal for version two tests for the MESTG, and we noticed that actually we could split that into risks and tests because not everything was actually a test. So we started doing an exercise and splitting this in a meaningful way so that risks are things that become agnostic to the operating system as the MESVS it's today. Like the MESVS doesn't consider Android or iOS, it's just in general for both. So the risk, uh, they will also be referring to, to both platforms. And then the test will be the final implementation for Android or iOS. And the important thing to note is also in general, um, I forgot to tell you before, is, is these relationships between the components. This is very important because you see that we have the standard, the MSVS telling us there is a control that you need to ensure. Then this will be represented by one or multiple risks. This will be tested by one or multiple tests. And those tests will be supported by the knowledge that is on the MSTG. Things like what are the permission, uh, let, me see, let me think, um, yeah, permissions on Android. There is a section on that. So you will be able to read that and then you understand how permissions on Android works for your test. Then that test uses certain techniques. So you will be able to uh, test for that with static analysis or dynamic analysis. And you will be using certain tools for that as well. And then we might also have some apps that implement those vulnerabilities so you can play with them and test your knowledge. So we are going to talk about more in detail uh, about this differentiation between tests and, and, and risks. So let's go to the next slide. We see how it was before. If you're 
before you were going to investigate one of our tests, you will see that in some cases they even cover for multiple MSVS controls. And now we ensure that they only cover for one. And they were big chunks of text in our guide. And now we're taking that apart, splitting that into risks and tests, and also making that as small as possible. So we call this atomic tests because as you're going to see in, uh, in a couple of slides, they should be really, really small and actionable. So in this case, you could see that we could cover storage one with two different risks. And the first risk has more than two tests. The second risk has two tests and so on. So on the next slide, we're talking about the structure. Before, we had overview, static analysis, and dynamic analysis. And in the new version, this is just the current status. We might still change this, but it's uh, how we have it today. So mm, in the risk, we have metadata. That's also very important because that has a lot of power. We make the um, MESTG machine readable thanks to this. So you can use all the tools to read out all of this information and for us, it's a great way to put mappings there, to put relationships between uh, controls, risks, tests, and so on. So this opens a lot of possibilities. And um, in the new version, the risk, as you can see here, they will have um, overview impact mitigations, very simple. And we intend also to capture the mitigations as their own components whenever possible because then we can just go ahead and reuse them as well. As for the uh, tests themselves, they of course will also have metadata. And this will include the profiles like Sven was, was commenting before, L1, L2, privacy, and so on. Um, in some cases, we might even be able to point out related APIs like Android APIs, iOS APIs in the metadata. And you will see how this can become very, very powerful. As for the sections, they start with steps. So this is exactly how you are going to test this. One, two, three, like we, um, we have the steps like that, really short and simple. Then we generate an observation. It's like you have, implement, uh, you have tested these things and this is the data that comes out. And in the next one, in the evaluation, we tell you what you need to do to that, um, with that data to evaluate it and come up with the result. Are you having this vulnerability or not? And we also include some examples. Since I know this might some, sound a bit abstract for now, I've included a couple of examples that we are currently working on. So in the next slide, you can see first we are going to test for MSVS storage 2, which says the app prevents leakage of sensitive data. So for this, one of the related risks is this one on screen. Insertion of sensitive data into logs. There might be other thing. For this example, we just uh, pick this one. I don't expect you to read everything here, but uh, you see that we have the overview section, the impact, and the mitigations. This risk is going to be implemented by one, two, or many tests. In this example, I present you two tests we are working on right now. And one is the leakage of sensitive data to logcat, one Android tool. And the other one, uh, which is about um, uh, leakage of sensitive data via login APIs. So let's take a look at Test number one, uh, I'm sorry, please go back one sec, just to highlight that we have the, the sections I mentioned before. Uh, the steps is the first section. So you see one, monitor the system logs, filtering for your target app. Two, launch and use the app and just basically click everywhere and enter um, things like 1111, so you can um, see that later in your outputs. The observation is 
okay, we run steps one and two, what do we get out of that? We get a filter look at output. Then what do we need to do with that to say if you're vulnerable or not? So the evaluation tells you if the test case, fa uh, the test case fails, if you can find sensitive data you enter before within the filtered locket output. And then you ha we have some examples. And this is what we I am addressing in the next slide. And this is completely new to the MSTG. Before we had this kind of examples and they were embedded into the chapters. So you couldn't really work with them. You had to copy them out and try to play with them. You couldn't know if they were actually working anytime. And um, with this new approach, we have all these things in folders, which you can just uh, download and play with them. So every test is going to have at least one code snippet that presents the vulnerability. In this case, you will see some Java code uh, having calls to the log API and system out print and other APIs that we are also mentioning in the test. We will have a SAST rule for static analysis. In this case, we uh, we decided to use SEMGRIP. So this is a SEMGRIP rule that will address those, um, those APIs. Then, one click more, we have the test script, which just runs SEMGRIP with that rule to that, uh, with that snippet and gets up the output. And in the output, we, we see that we have seven code findings and we can see exactly which ones are those. <clears throat> so this is great. If you wanna also do it yourself, just play with it, maybe create new examples, but we want to, we wanna take one step further and since we are already using GitHub Actions, we would like to do this using our GitHub Actions. Because this way, you will know that not only the snippets are working, but also the tests are working and everything is working every day. This, this GitHub Actions run at least on every release. So we can see that everything is working fine. So for each test, we will uh, let the uh, GitHub Actions run. They will build the code snippet into an APK or IPA. We will test with a SAS rule that is provided in a test and the test script. This will get us some output and it will be validated. The same for the uh, dynamic analysis. We have a similar flow. We build the code snippet into an APK and IPA we expect to have a way to run the app in an emulator, a virtual device, and this will test with the test script and the dynamic analysis rules and get us the output from the device by the test and we will validate it. This is, let me say, an early concept that we have right now. We're thinking about these things and we will, as you can imagine, need a lot of help implementing this in our pipelines, but we are very, very excited about this. And over to you, Sven, thanks. Okay, perfect, Carlos. So um, let me show you a little bit about, about the next steps and also um, about the contribution from individuals or also from um, companies. So just again, what Carlos was saying is the very first draft of these kind of new atomic test cases, also in terms of how the risk was splitted and everything. And this will be the main effort also for next year. So the MASVS we released and we set now the guardrails of how things we envision for the project in terms of this new structure for the MASTG. <laughs> and therefore the release today is one intermediate step and what we are planning to do for next year. Obviously, um, if you again look at the book, this is of course quite a significant effort that needs to be done here. And um, therefore, in terms of contributing, I mean, if you as an individual would like to help um, or contribute to the project, we have a page for this that can guide you through this of how uh, one can contribute to it. There are of course a lot of different kind of issues in our GitHub repo where one can help or you can also just reach out to us on the other side, it's also um, possible for companies and we do have one so-called MAS Advocate. So this is a program um, that we established now 
where now secures our very first um, MAS advocate simply because they're contributing significantly to the project and spreading the word and have really high, uh, consistent of high impact contributions to the project, which just again, we want to say thank you for this. And um, we also would like to thank already for all the companies that were reaching out to us in order to support for this refactoring process. And we hope that we can start early next year to work with these companies also in order to do all of these um, refactoring in terms of these new um, test cases. And also thanks to all the companies that have um, helped us financially also. So you can see quite a few companies um, that were supporting the project. Thank you very much to them and also to Symperium, who was our um, latest sponsor also for the project. And with this, um, here can just contact us in various ways. Carlos and I are available via LinkedIn, GitHub, over Slack, uh, mail. You can definitely reach out to us in various, via various channels. And um, the whole slide deck that you saw, you can also simply download here via this QR code or via the bit.ly link above. So feel free to download and um, have a look. And otherwise, I can just say thank you for participating today. And if there are any questions, then feel free to um, yeah, let us know and happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone? Yes. You mean now specifically for the dynamic part? Yeah, that are dynamic yeah. Part I mean, that would be potentially something, yes. I mean, otherwise, it's, it's uh, as Carlos was saying, it's a, bit, it's a bit of early stages. It's just where we envision it, because we simply want to come to a stage where it's just consistent in terms of testing. For static, it's, of course, a bit easier. And um, for dynamic, it's, again, something that we outline at the moment. But this, this could be potentially one, one way of doing it also, yes. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, then I would say again, thank you very much for joining and enjoy the lunch.